Hey, welcome to Rob Paints Models. In today's episode, we're going to be painting the Briar Queen from the Night Haunts Warband Thorns of the Briar Queen. Now, this model has a lot of fiddly details. I'll not lie, I painted almost this entire model with my head magnifier on so I could see everything. So be warned, you might get some eye strain. Now, if you've watched uh, part one of this two part series, with the chain rasps, you'll note that this is pretty much the same to start with, just the opposite way around. Here I am painting Mechanica Standard Grey from the head towards the bottom of the model, or in this case the bottom, the ends of the robes. I'm also painting it a little bit on the wispy kind of ghosty woo effect that's coming off the base there. That's lifting some rose petals up with it. And building my gradient up with Dawnstone down to about the 50% mark, just overlapping a little bit, taking it up onto the head so that we can create a white um, headdress look. A bit like a wedding dress, going for that banshee look here. Now Administratum Grey, again starting at the top, going down to about a third of the way down the model there. Just using that to highlight everything up, create ourselves a nice little pre-shade. Now Ulthu and Grey, just on the head, across the shoulders, and down a little bit of the back there getting it across the chest, making sure to catch the hips a little bit as well, and also the very end of the ghosty woo effect. And finally, just a little bit of white just to catch the top of the head and pick out any extra little details. Now I'm going to dry brush Mechanica Standard Grey across the black areas of the model. This is to try and catch up all of the... Uh, folds that are in the ghosty woo effect slash robes. <clears throat> you don't need to go all the way further up into the paler areas of the model because you don't want that darker grey to catch on top of the light areas that you've painted. Doing the same with Dawnstone, again going over the black slash grey areas and over the Dawnstone areas, trying not to get it over the much lighter colours. Now I'm using the same with Administratum Grey, taking this again slightly higher up, basically to each point where the appropriate colour is from the airbrushing. The trick to making this smooth is to use a very soft dry brush and a very light touch, with a very, very little paint on your brush. If you do this, you'll get a nice smooth dry brush effect. Again, also in grey, going almost all the way up now, catching all of those edges. You can see it's building up into a nice, smooth gradient on those folds. Now I'm going through some Artist Acrylic Titanium White and I'm edge highlighting all of the ghosty woo here. Just going around all of the outermost edges with a very fine brush, this is a Broken Toad size zero. The titanium white's uh, not quite uh, pure out of the bottle here. It's been thinned a little bit with some flow improver and some water. Just enough so that it comes off my brush, but not so much that it flows too readily. Because we want it, it's easier to edge highlight with a slightly thicker paint. Now we're going to be using some Mimear and Green, as I call it. This is a one-to-one -one mix of Gullum and Blue and Waywatcher Green. And we're airbrushing this across the darker areas of the model. We're going to be creating gradient with this, so we just want to start with this blue-green look. And build this up across the darkest areas, overlapping into our lighter areas. This will take a few coats to cover um, in a nice way. Make sure each coat dries fully. The glazes take a really long time to dry when you airbrush them, so make sure you let them dry. Now we're using some Waywatcher Green, and this is creating our green area of the effect. Again, these glazes take a long time to dry. Make sure you let them dry. You don't want to build it up into a glossy sheen because then it will start to pool, and then you'll get a wash kind of effect. And You do not want that. You just want to tint the underlying colour. Now I'm going to be showing you two different ways to paint the vines on this model. I'm going to be starting with the paintbrush method, which I'm going to be using on the back of the cloak. So I start here by base coating all of the vines with Castellan Green. You want to use a brush with a decent point on it, a thinned down paint, 
and I'm using a head magnifier so that I don't get any paint onto the airbrushed effect because touching that up afterwards is just a nightmare. It's, it's really hard and it's time consuming to touch up that airbrush effect. So make sure you're being as precise as possible when you're doing this. Now I'm going to use some Ogryn Camo and I'm going to start creating a gradient from Castellan Green through to pure Ogryn Camo. So you can see I'm mixing in some Ogryn Camo into my Castellan Green in my wet palette here, getting myself a nice first colour. And I'm going to start painting that along the length of my vine, just from the Castellan Green towards the tip. Now you can use any method you want for blending these together. You can wet blend, you can glaze, whatever, whatever feels right to you, I'm using wet blending. So I'm going back and forth between my Castellan Green and my mixed colour here in order to create a transition between the Castellan Green towards the uh, area where it intersects the cloak and the Ogryn Camo closer towards the tips. I'm just adding a little bit more Ogryn Camo to my mix at each point and then just painting it in further along the vine to the tip. Until eventually I get to pure Ogryn Camo which is going about the last third of that I think. Now I'm taking some Ushabti Bone and mixing that into my Ogryn Camo and doing the same thing where I'm just painting in Ushabti Bone right at the tip of the vines and then drawing it back along the length until it's uh, blending in with my Ogryn Camo. Again, I'm mostly wet blending this transition but you could layer it up, use glazes, whichever you feel most comfortable using. Now for the airbrush method, I've based the vines with Castellan Green. I used some post attack to mark, mask off the uh, ghosty woo effect. And I'm going to use Strachan Green to paint along the length of the uh, vines. Now I'm starting at the tip and I'm moving backwards. And I'm taking the actual route the vine is travelling so that I create a gradient around that. I want the darker part of the vine to cross over the underneath the lighter part where it loops round. So I'm going to have to go back in and touch this up with a paintbrush after I've painted this with the airbrush, but it is much easier to get this gradient over a long distance with an airbrush than it is by paintbrush. So I'm being very careful not to get any overspray on the rest of the model here, but this is also why I've not painted the skin at this point. So now I'm going in with Ogryn Camo and I'm going just about up to the arm with this. Again, you need to do some touch up on the areas where it crosses over, but that's not particularly hard and it's much easier to do it with the airbrush this way and touch it up later. So now I'm just doing a shabty bone from the very tip to about halfway along that length. And that gets us most of our transition done. I can see here I need to touch up around this area. So I'm just using some of the colours that I mixed from when I was doing the uh, paintbrush version. And just painting that in in order to cover up that little kind of overlap there. Now I'm using some titanium white and I'm just using this to highlight all of the thorns and a few of the uh, sharper edges that appear on the length of the vines. This is mostly just paint the tips of the thorns to make them look nice and sharp and pointy. I'm going to use some Waywatcher Green, and I'm just going to kind of use this semi-randomly. It's not, it's uh, just to kind of tint the vine to make it look a bit fresher and a bit greener, a bit more um, springy, plant-like-y 
I don't know what the word is. It, it made it look fresher, which is what I wanted in some spots. So glazing this over some of the areas where it's lighter achieved that. So now we're going to be painting all of the roses and I'm base coating them with corn red using uh, two very thin coats here. I've thinned it down to some flow improver and water. And just being, again, very careful not to get this on any areas you've painted before. Like I said, I'm wearing a head magnifier and I'm using my best brush with its best point in order to do this. And it's quite time consuming, but the result is worth it. So now I'm going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm just highlighting the edges of the petals on the roses. So again, very sharp brush. Big old magnifier, you can see I'm almost off camera because I'm holding it that close to my face to be able to see. And just catch in the edges of all of those petals. Now I'm doing the same with Wild Rider Red just not covering quite as large of an area as I did with the Evil Sun Scarlet. And this paint isn't particularly thinned down very much because as it's thicker it actually makes it easier to do the edge highlights with. Now I'm using some titanium white and it's just mixed a little bit with my Wild Rider Red just to make a pinky orange tone that's very very light. And I'm just painting very little dots on each of the petals here just to give it a kind of shiny reflection and that finishes off the roses you can see once they're all done they look quite nice the backs of them i just glazed in some evil sun scarlet in order to highlight them most of the focus was on the fronts now i'm going to take some ogren camo and i'm using this to highlight all of the leaves. So I'm not, I've left the leaves the color that I painted them with the blending and the airbrush. I'm just using this to highlight the edges. Also, if the leaf has a fold going down the middle of it that is would be facing upwards, I'm using this to highlight the underneath of that fold to make it look a bit more three-dimensional. The skin for the Briar Queen is exactly the same method I used for the Chain Rasp video. Taking Demonet Hide and Titanium White, I base coat with Demonet Hide and then I blend in the Titanium White onto the lightest areas of the skin, so the upwards facing areas. So I'm only going to cover this relatively briefly. Base everything with Demonet Hide, thin it down, give it a couple of coats so that it uh, doesn't obscure any detail. And then I'll be using a loaded brush technique in order to paint the highlights with my titanium white and demonet hide. However, you could wet blend, you could layer, you can glaze, use whichever technique you feel most comfortable with. I'm only using demonet hide and white on this. So on the chain rasps, I used a Drucci Violet shade at this point, but I'm not going to use that on her because I want her skin to appear a little bit paler. And so I'm just using the loaded brush between the titanium white and the demonet hide. So you can see with loaded brush, in the back of the brush you have your base color, so in this case it's demonet hide, and on the very tip of the brush you've got your highlight color, which is titanium white. Now as you paint along the length of the arm here, for example, the titanium white is being painted down and then mixing with the demonet hide that's in the back of the brush, and that creates transition. This is very similar to wet blending, but you're doing it essentially on the brush rather than on the model. Now the titanium white that I'm using is Artist's Acrylic Titanium White, which um, it's got quite a long drying time on it, so the work time for it is quite long, so you can go back and you can wet blend, you can fix your blends with this quite easily, and you've got a lot of leeway with it. So you can see I'm trying to make the skin tone quite pale. This is a relatively kind of organic process, a lot of back and forth painting a blend then going back and fixing it up but at the end of it you end up with quite a nice subtle purple skin you could replace the demonet hide with any other color that you wish and the same effect will work 
So you could replace it with blue, you could replace it with pink, you could replace it with green. So long as you've got that white highlight, it will always work. And it always looks like this, which gives it works really well on ghosts and other supernatural creatures. Whereas with human skin, you kind of want to get more different skin tones in there, like you want to glaze in some reds and some purples and maybe a little bit of green and, and yellow in some cases. But on something like a ghost, where you've got a really kind of supernaturally looking effect going on, just these two colours works perfectly fine. Now we're going to be painting some very small details. I'm going to start with the corset. So I'm base coating it with corn red. I'm using, this is quite thinned down and doing a couple of coats with it. Again, got my head magnifier on getting in shot there. And I'm just using the tip of my brush to paint this in so I'm not getting it on anywhere that I don't want the paint to go. So for example, that big string of pearls that's across her waist, we don't want to get it on any of there. We just want to leave that nice and uh, white just as the airbrush will have left it. Painting it around the ghosty woo kind of robe effects. And once it's dry and we've done two coats, we're going to wash it with some Army Painter Dark Tone. You could also use Nuln Oil here, or Nuln Oil Gloss would probably be best if you want a comparison. But I find that Army Painter Dark Tone dries much darker than Nuln Oil. Nuln Oil has a tendency to dry a little bit grey, like a dark grey colour rather than black. I find Army Painter Dark Tone get into the recess as well, dries completely black. So now I'm mixing in some titanium white into my corn red and I'm just using this to highlight up the corset here. Now I'm not doing many highlights here, mostly catching kind of her breasts and a little bit kind of on the underside of each of the bits of um, detailing uh, and embroidery, I guess it's embroidery in the corset and along the bones and along the, the bottom ridges of the corset there. Just catching those edges with the side of my brush. And I'm just adding a little bit more titanium white for each successive highlight. Going back in and refining that. I'm also occasionally going back in with some corn red and fixing those highlights as I go. In some areas I'll be going back in with some army painted dark tone and just fixing that as well. So you can see how I've got a much lighter tone. This is just almost pure white. But it's still got a little bit of that corn red in there to make it a little bit pinky. Just catching the very corners of all of that corsetry detail in order to make it pop. I also go in and I paint the laces with a shabty bone, but black will also work as well for that. Now for the dagger's scabbard, I'm painting the leather with Rhinox hide to base coat it to start with. Again, making sure not to get it on any of my ghosty woo effect. This is quite a tricky spot to reach around the back of it, so I didn't actually paint the back anywhere near as nicely as I painted the front, but you can't really tell. I'm going to use some uh, scrag brown. This is thinned down quite a lot. I'm using the very tip of my brush to kind of create a random pattern. So i am not got any plan in mind for this, aside from to focus my random squiggle with the tip of my brush towards the very edges of the leather area here. Now I'm using Ushabti Bone and I'm kind of doing the same thing but I'm focusing almost purely on the edges, making lots of little dots and dashes just to try and make it look like it's uh, damaged and worn leather. Just making a few little scratches. Try not to keep them, let them go in the same directions as each other have them overlap areas, but don't do too many of them. Now I'm using some glazes of Rhinox hide, and I'm glazing into the middle of each of the uh, leather panels essentially. This is just going to darken down and unify those scratches with the scrag brown underneath to create a nice kind of leather effect. I'm going back in with some pure shabty bone and just catch in the very topmost edges of those nicks and scratches just to make sure that they're nice and bright and look like they're three-dimensional. And that's the leather section done. Now we're going to paint in the gold areas. And I'm going to be using a mix of Vallejo Game Color Glorious Gold and Games Workshop's Sycorax Bronze. It's about a one-to-one -one mix, roughly. We're just trying to 
tone down the bright yellowness of that gold a little bit. So I'm very carefully base coating in my gold areas here. I do this on the tiara as well, but I'm going to show it on the dagger because it's much easier to see. The tiara is such a small piece of detail that uh, it was very difficult to see with the naked eye what I was doing, so I had to use my magnifier again for the entire duration. So it's much easier to see on the dagger here. Again, you can just make out my, ma my magnifier coming into shot there. If you're wondering how I painted the gemstones that are on the tiara, there's a couple of hanging off her ears, there's one in the centre of the tiara, and there's some hanging off the back of her little headdress there. Um, they are painted the exact same way as the roses are painted. see how small these areas are that you have to paint and uh, how easy it is to make mistakes so that's the uh, tiara finished I'm now going to show you the rest of it on the dagger so you can see those gemstones they're just painted exactly the same way as the roses So now I'm going to highlight the gold areas with Sycorax Bronze, this is pure Sycorax Bronze. Just catching the topmost edges of all of those gold areas with the Sycorax Bronze. You can see I'm using my smallest brush. And Sycorax Bronze doesn't cover great, but uh, it'll take a couple of coats in order to build up the effect and look nice. Now I'm going to be using VMA Silver, and this is actually mixed in a little bit with Sycorax Bronze, not very much. And I'm using that to highlight the very edges and brightest points on all of those gold areas. Now I'm going to be using some very thin Rhinox Hide, you can see how thin it is here. It's make paintings of very thin lines. I'm using this to tidy up around the leather areas and the gold. I'm also using this to paint shadows in underneath the gold and in the gaps. I'm using this instead of a wash because the gaps are so shallow the wash's surface tension actually prevents it from working effectively. So I'm just using the tip of my brush and this thin paint with some thin with some flow improver and water to break down the surface tension and just very carefully painting in all of those shadow areas. Now I'm going to paint the handle of the dagger with a bad and black. Again, being careful not to get this on anything else. We don't want to have to spend time touching up that ghosty woo effect. Or any of the other details that we've already painted. We're on the home stretch now. There's not much left after this. And this is some titanium white and a bad and black. Just a bit of loaded brush to paint this one little highlight down the length of the dagger blade, dagger bleh, handle there. So just tidying it up with a little bit of black. 
putting a little dot of white just towards the bottom of the highlight there to give us our brightest reflection. And that's the queen done. Now we're on to painting the bases. So I'm going to be showing you on the queen's base. I airbrush some armor brown from Vallejo here. You can also just base coat this with Rhinox Hide. They're practically the same color. I just used the airbrush because it was going to be faster. Now I'm going to dry brush the earth areas with Steel Legion Drab. Just using a big old dry brush here. And then also with the sandry dust. Now I'm going to be painting the flagstones in with Mechanica Standard Grey. And then I'm going to give them a dry brush of Administratum Grey. Now I'm mostly taking this just in the direction I consider to be the front of the base, which is essentially where I consider the light to be coming from. But with the ghosts, it's kind of an odd concept of where the light's coming from, because they seem to bring their own light with them. But you just want to make sure you catch all of the edges of the flagstones with this, as well as any of the raised details, which can be quite hard to discern on these flagstones. Now I'm going to wash all of the uh, base with Army Painter Dark Tone. Again, you could use non-oil at this stage. At this point, it doesn't really make big difference. I was just using Army Painter Dark Tone because that's what I currently had available to me. It does dry quite a lot darker than non-oil, though. Now I'm going to use some Administratum Grey and I'm actually going to edge highlight those flagstones just to make sure that they have got a lot of contrast in them. Just to make those edges really pop. In some instances, I'm also using a very fine brush, just painting some extra cracks and details on the flagstones where I felt like they needed it. some Ulthron Grey and I'm just going to use that to reinforce that edge highlight mostly along the front edges of everything and along some of the corners where the cracks and the uh, edges of the flagstones meet. <laughs> 
Now I'm going to paint in the skull here with the sand we dust. There's two other bones as well on the base. And I do them all in this exact same way. I also painted the skull on the chain wasp carrying its own head. I painted it exactly the same way as I'm painting this skull here now. So just base coat it with Zandri dust. Then I'm going to do a loaded brush blend between titanium white and Zandri dust. So I've got Zandri dust thinned down and in the back of the brush and titanium white on my tip. And I'm just painting in my blend from titanium white at the brightest points to Zandri dust in the darkest points. And this is kind of, again, a case of use whichever technique you prefer. I'm using a loaded brush because I prefer it. You can layer this in, you can glaze this in, you can wet blend this. Whichever technique you prefer, go for it. I just happen to prefer loaded brush for things like this because I find it to be a bit faster. So again, consider where the light's coming from. I'm trying to make sure that the highlights are going across the top of the uh, brow line of the skull there and around the eye sockets and the nose and making sure I pick out all of the teeth as well with the white. So there we have it, that is the Briar Queen herself. The vines and roses that you can see on the base are painted the same way as the vines and roses on the rest of the model. Thank you to my patrons who you can see scrolling past now, they're who make everything possible on this channel, and I'm very grateful for their support. If you would like to join Patreon, there's a link in the description below and on the screen right now, where you can come and uh, get early access to videos without any ads running on them, and some other color guides and fun stuff like that. You can also subscribe to the channel, that's dead helpful. Uh, YouTube thinks you'll like this other video, and come check out my social medias as well. Bye!